agenda is to discuss a tax year sharing. This is April 25th. Uh, and I'm going to put that as 26th. Under old business item 5. Town board meeting. So that would, um, yes. That would be discussed in executive session. And it would, because it has to do with simply giving us authority to go ahead and finalize it. So it's... We, what we're doing in there doesn't... Yeah. Well, that, that counts. So if you want... That's what I thought you were doing in there rather than having it in, in an executive session or attorney client here. So yes. I have my direction on that tax, sir. So... Help me out again. We, we discussed it in there to me as over the executive session. We're all well, together. It's client in there. We're all together. I have my my marching orders, and then as soon as it's resolved, yes. it's going to be there. Then we'll be coming back for you to authorize this, the settlement. Okay. So we don't have to do, so anything. Don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. Right. Okay. I take that back. We do not have an amended agenda there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Privilege of the floor and any of the items that are on the agenda. Yes. Chris Neely, uh, Campbell Hall. Uh, I want to remark on item four. Uh, I would like to say that Judge Onifre has a long history of deciding against environmental causes. If you think you won this round because Legoland has not done anything wrong, you need to think again. They signed a statement admitting guilt on the very issues that we brought up in this case. You might have won this court case, but the price you're going to have to pay down the road is far more significant. It could involve lives, it could involve health, it involves uh, illness, and I'll take a loss on a court case any day of my life to fight for the environment. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other items today? All right. No, uh, I'd Debbie? like to. I'd like to ditto her. Okay. And 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 say how ashamed I am at you writing that out in the manner in which you wrote it. And you think you won. You didn't win. This whole town is a big loser over this. And again, I'd like to bring up the fact that that the attorney for the town is also representing the Orange County Partnership, and I feel that it is a conflict of interest and we should replace his attorney with someone who does not have a conflict of interest and who is not out there representing the Orange County Partnership, the very people who brought us Legoland. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Doug, just for the record, yes. uh, I've said this before, but it appears to fall on deaf ears, is that I do not generally represent the Orange County Partnership and never have. Um, I am representing them in a singular piece of litigation with respect to um, a matter between the partnership and the authority budget office as to whether or not they are a public authority. And that's what my uh, engagement with the Orange County Partnership is limited to. Okay. I believe Thank he's you. on the board. All right, reports. Uh, George, we'll start with you. Okay. Uh, DPW report is as follows. Uh, by April 8th, um, uh, as uh, Brock puts it, there was a uh, premonition that there would be no more snow. Thus, the process of removing the snow equipment and installing the summer equipment from the trucks began. Several days were spent repairing any plow damage evident to residential lawns. Damage was light this year, which was surprising considering how little frost there was on the ground this winter. The sweep started its uh, yearly journey on April 4th, several days were shared with the village of Florida. The highway department brought equipment and asphalt millings over to Indiana Road in an attempt to make the item four dirt roads smoother from the for the agricultural vehicles. The bot holes uh, this year were terrible, and we were unable to schedule a reclaiming contractor in time for the initial plantings. Adding the millings will temporarily take some of the shock out of the potholes. The asphalt plant is open and we're able to use hot mix for patching. Patching was accomplished on uh, Jessup Switch, Arcadia, and where water main breaks had occurred on Upper Magic Circle and Good Time Court. The improved weather has allowed equipment to start ditching along the roadsides. Ditching work was done 
this month on uh, Reservoir, Lovett, Goshen Trail, Hartley, and Knoll Roads. Belgian block curb repairs have been made on Valley View Road and the ongoing uh, along Northgate. A section of a large ditch along Jessup Switch Road was stabilized with hot, with, a, with shot rock. A crew spent a couple of days cleaning up outside Town Hall and installing new mulch around the plantings. Our mandatory yearly training was conducted at Town Hall on April 23rd, which included uh, training on sexual harassment, right to uh, no laws, and blood-borne pathogens. That's it, Doctor. Okay. Ken? <clears throat> yes. Um, I'm sorry I missed last meeting, but I had to go see France. I was looking for sites for amusement parks. But anyway, um, I want to thank Doug, and while I was gone, Doug and Mary, Christine, and Sean, who met and updated all of the grants that we've applied for this status. Some have some been done, if you notice, the handicapped doors are in. The new floor is done, as, which was part of the contract. So that was done. I want to thank Doug. That was, that was a big one for us there. Us, us. Some of the salt shed is still out in the process and from Dazney. So we haven't finalized all of them, but we're still working on them. You know. um, today I went to the Moodner Creek uh, meeting over in Cora on the Hudson. Um, the recent article about Legoland were brought up at the meeting. There were some interesting comments from, Ms. from Neil Howell and to the committee, but due to lack of time, he handed out a folder, but no discussion. But you know, that was just, those meet those, those, I guess, discussion between, with Neil was between you and Jay Beaumont. We put out in print, and then we discussed that at the next, their next meeting. Otherwise, that's all I have. And thanks again, Doug. Okay. Appreciate it. John? It will be an AARP defensive driving class Monday, May the 6th at the Senior Complex. It's $20 for AARP members, $25 if you're not. Uh, the class is limited to $35. I believe they've got about 16 or 17 signed up presently. So There's a book discussion that will take place at the Senior Center February or Friday, May 24th from 11 to 1. The book that will be discussed is The Ambassador's Wife by Jennifer Steele. Um, May 13th, at the senior club meeting, Maria Patrizio, a family court judge and a book author, will be the guest speaker, and she's also providing a free lunch there for them. Um, on May the 22nd, there will be a Mother's Day and Father's Day luncheon at the uh, at the senior center. We're all interested. The buffet dinner. Uh, oh, it's a 3:45. Excuse me. A buffet dinner catered by Catherine's Restaurant. And you have to sign up by no, the, end of, the end of April. You have to sign up before that. Um, the only other thing we discussed was there was an issue with parking at the senior center where residents of the apartments behind the senior center complex were parking around the building and the seniors attending classes or uh, things at the center were actually using their walkers and coming from all the way over by Rock Roma and they were walking all the way around. So they went out and bought 18 new parking signs, senior center uh, guests only, and they've been posted up there around the center. So they got the parking for the seniors attending the programs there. Good. Thank you very much, Jen. To add on what uh, George was talking about with the training, we spent a whole day with employees in here. And in addition to the training that everybody had to have, we had training for, I think there were six or seven of us in this training. There was defibrillator training. We had uh, uh, one of the better trainings I thought was, was uh, with children, babies. If a baby's choking, how do you resuscitate a child? And how do you clear the, the pathway? And so some of these things I had never seen before. And uh, I was really amazed. In fact, I think that all parents, and perhaps grandparents, well, it didn't take five or ten minutes to go through the training on how to, if a child's cho baby's choking, what to do. And you, the fact is, you, you hold it on your upside down where it's facing down, and you hit the back very carefully five times. If the item doesn't come out of the mouth, you turn them over and you give them CPR and holler for help. And, uh, and a lot of times when you're doing the CPR, they say the object comes out. 
the little kids can grab anything. And uh, they've got a whole life to live. And I thought, boy, this needs to be done at the hospital or wherever the child, the children are born or somewhere. So I'm going to do a little thinking about that and see if there's something we can do as a community. Okay. Um, I had a meeting with a county executive this morning, Harry Poor. It's Harry Poor, he's the filling in. Uh, we had the Department of Public Works and uh, Amy's project manager, our engineer, and myself at this meeting. And what it is, we're putting pipes, or Amy's Kitchen is putting pipes that between their location on Hartley Road and the city of Middletown where they're going to get water and sewer. And so they put the pipes in the trail and everything's fine. But there are three bridges that they have to cross that go over one that walk hill and then two are just over ravines. And uh, uh, we want to make sure that those pipes can be hung on those ab abutments. And so there is, uh, we're going to work this out. But um, when it came about from the county to the Amy's, it, it left a lot to be desired relative to the understanding what they can or could not do. Uh, but the county's working with us very well on that. Um, Chester had a fire in their Department of Public Works garage. It's my understanding four pieces of equipment, two trucks were destroyed, and two big loaders were significantly damaged, maybe destroyed as well. Okay. And so we're going to do an investigation. We're going to find out down there what caused it, what they could have done different than they were doing. And we're going to look at our DPW garage. And it just happens that we have a fireman working for us in the city of Middletown, a professional fireman. And we're going to involve him in this discussion as well to see if there's anything we can do to preclude some incomparable to, to here in Goshen. And the last item I had is we held the annual water sewer informational meeting. Uh, just discuss the capital budget and also any rate changes. The only rate change we had was a decrease in one of our, our water districts. Um, but we're going to hopefully spend, if we can get the money, $2.2 million. Uh, a lot of that's going to come from uh, federal grants. So what we're going to do is put down on a piece of paper exactly what we want and the justification for it. And then Ken and I, Ken's my co-chair of Water and Sewer, we're going to go see Chuck Schumer and uh, Sean Maloney and put a pitch to them uh, and see what we can get. I know um, back in 2006 we did this, Ken and I, and we went to Congressman Hall and he got us a half a million dollars to replace a water line in Hamilton uh, uh, Park. So we're going to try the same thing. We've been trying to get uh, money from the state and others to grants, and it just doesn't seem to work. I think we go face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and we can see what we can do. OK. Uh, the first item is, under old business, hold a meeting for the owner input for three properties identified by the building inspector as being unsafe and need repair and, or demolition. Uh, there are three structures that, uh, on 17A, SPL 20-1-152.2, 6 Larchwood, and 100 uh, Fletcher Street. Would someone like to make a motion that we open this meeting? Second. Okay. It's actually opening up the hearing. Pardon? It's opening up a hearing, not a meeting. I'm sorry, a hearing. Hold the meeting. Yeah, the hearing. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, is anybody here representing any of those properties? Okay. Then we'd still like to make a motion we uh, close the hearing. This is this is for which one, Doug? This is for all three. Okay. Well, we should. Um, Treat them separately as different things we have to do with each one. So, um, why, don't I, why don't you close the public hearing and then I'll okay. walk you through it? Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to close the public hearing? So, um, actually, no. no. Not, I take Not a public hearing. We, no, no, it's my, my fault, Doug. Okay. 
I think that there would be a motion to close the hearings for both 6 Larchwood and 100 Fletcher. Fine. Would someone like to make a motion in that regard? So moved. Second. second. Okay. All favor say aye. 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 Okay. With respect to 1879 Route 17A, um, we received um, evidence from the U.S. Postal Service that they have not received notice of this hearing. And so what I suggest the board do um, is to go ahead and continue this hearing until May 9th. And in the meantime, we will personally serve notice of the hearing upon them. All right. That should be in the form of a motion? Yeah, a motion to go ahead and continue the hearing for 1879 Route 17A until May 9th meeting. Okay. 7.30. Okay, is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. All right. And then uh, with respect to um, both 6 Larchwood and uh, 100 uh, Fletcher Street, that uh, it would be appropriate.